It's that fun, stressful part of the build where it's time to carve the neck. I have uh, my blank here is about one inch thick uh, all the way across and I, I've, I've drawn my center line back in and I've roughed out a heel in the volute section. And so the first thing I want to do is actually measure uh, to see where I can trim off you know, any excess from the neck blank. If you look at the Warmoth site, they say a uh, American C-shape guitar uh, is about eight tenths of an inch thick at the first fret and 85 hundredths of an inch at uh, the 12th fret. And so what I'm going to do is going to use my uh, digital calipers just to make sure uh, everything's right, go through, mark off where that, that section is, and then use a ruler. And I'm going to see if I can either use my bandsaw or at least use my orbital sander to take off some of that extra material to get it down from uh, one inch to, you know, close to uh, the 0.8 or 0.85 where it's supposed to be so that I don't have to spend all that time uh, with my Shinto rasp actually trying to take that down further. And so once I, you know, get that material down, I'll go back, redraw the center line again, and then I'll show how you use the fastening technique to start carving into the neck. finish marking up my neck, two tenths of an inch might not seem like a lot. If I bring this out on the camera, if you think about having to do this um, by hand with a rasp, uh, that is a significant number of strokes. And so what I'm going to try is using my bandsaw and at least getting fairly close. The point here is not to get as close to the line as possible so I don't have to do any work. But if I can remove a little bit of that material, uh, that'll just make it easy for me, uh, easier for me uh, down the line. Um, and maybe, you know, after I see how this works out, maybe I'll, I'll go to the orbital sander for a little bit to get a little closer. Um, but fortune favors the brave, so I'm gonna try this with the bandsaw. Not too bad from this side, I was able to stay on the other side of the line, uh, but it did get a little wiggly over here. And so, um, you know, this is one of the dangers of, of trying to cut a multi-angled type of piece. Um, but overall, I think it's gonna be fine. I am gonna take this over to my belt sander and just try and clean this up a little bit more uh, so that I can try and make sure it's at least mostly level across before I get started anywhere else. After a minute or so on the belt sander, uh, I've got this pretty much uh, leveled out. Now the thing about this is, is it doesn't actually matter that I got a little bit wiggly. Obviously you don't want to you know, cut a really steep angle and, and mess everything up. But I'm still gonna go and I'm gonna be carving down these edges anyway um, into facets. And so if this is slightly lower, that's okay because this whole thing is gonna be shaved off. But one thing I do wanna make sure is that when I measure all of these things out, um, that I'm actually not measuring from this side because I do know it's shorter now. And so what I'll do is I'll measure from the fretboard side down and then that way, uh, the line that I'm gonna be aiming at with my rasp um, won't be uh, biased by, by this little extra cut. So the first thing I need to do is go and draw the center line back in. Um, obviously, you know, I cut it off, I sanded, that's gonna disappear. And so we'll put that center line back first.
with my reference line back in place, the next line that I want to draw is the first facet. And so you go from the middle line here, and then you go to the side. And what you want to do is go approximately down the middle of this um, area. And now, as I mentioned before, since this is uh, just tapered a little bit for my wiggly cut, I'm going to measure from my known good side, figure out where half of this is, and then measure that half from the top of the fretboard to the middle line so that they'll go back to being equal and I'll have a better target for when I'm using my rasp. So it looks like I'm at 0.82 inches right here, 0 0.86, 0 0.78, so I'm a little, little thin there. So what I'm going to do is actually go through this and go about four tenths of an inch from the fretboard, because that will make it approximately, um, you know, 0.8 all the way around. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind is I was actually targeting 0.85 here, so I should probably do maybe 0.42 inches, um, but we'll figure that out. I now have my facet lines drawn uh, down the middle of the side. And so now what you can imagine is I'm going to take my uh, rasp, I mean, obviously this is a ruler, but um, I'm going to take my rasp and I'm going to go at such an angle to try and cut this piece off. Um, you know, start with the middle line here and you can sort of think about it as a kind of a, a not necessarily a V or a triangle, uh, but you, you start to do that. And then what ends up happening is you keep going uh, halfway through the facets until you get a nice rounded over shape. Now, I also have one of these uh, neck templates that shows you, you know, the, what the profile might look like at the first, seventh, and twelfth fret. And so I'm also going to use that as my reference point to make sure that um, I'm not going too far. The goal here is not to perfectly replicate whatever a 1962 strap might be, um, but it's really just to get something that's, you know, approximately comfortable for whomever might have this uh, going forward. have all my facet lines in place, so now it's time to clamp this to something and start smoothing off this facet. Have my Shinto rasp here, or maybe more generally, Japanese saw rasp. It has both a um, jagged set of teeth and a finer set of teeth, so this side is for removing lots of material quickly. This side is for uh, smoothing out a little bit more clamp the neck to my workbench. And so now it's just time to go through and, and start working away these facets to start carving the first uh, profile into the neck. It's gonna take quite a while, so I'm gonna time-lapse this. Um, you're also gonna see I'll probably wear a glove. Uh, these are sharp, and if you wanna you know, work the rasp this way, it's probably a good idea to wear some gloves. And so can't wait to see how this turns out, and we'll come back in a little bit and see what it looks like. It took about five minutes to do this first facet. I'm not sure if it'll come through on the time lapse, but what I ended up doing is first I knocked off the, the hard corner. Then I went back and, and took a much shallower angle to try and get closer to the facet line. After I got that pretty close, then I went here and did a much steeper angle to try and get close to that facet line. And by doing that, you'll actually get a, a slight ridge in the middle and then the last step is to, to hold this to what the angle would actually be to, to do both. 
this facet line and that facet line, try and keep it smooth, and then uh, cut it off. It doesn't really matter um, if you hit the line a little bit. Um, obviously, you don't want to go too far because these are your reference lines. But now that this is gone, there's actually the pencil line is slightly gone, but there's a hard ridge right here. And so that, in effect, works as its own uh, pencil line. And so I'll uh, flip this around and then actually probably what I'm gonna do is just walk around and, and, and do it this other side. And then uh, we can work on the next set of facets to smooth out. of the first two facets is completed. You can see I've intentionally not gone towards the neck volute here. And I've also stayed away from um, the, the heel. I'll end up doing those with a, a finer tool than, than the saw rasp. And I'll try and get this down here. You can see now why this is going to start to work. If you have the um, the neck angle like this. Now you can see that on this side it's falling down, this side it's falling down. In fact, I can get my uh, I can get my my neck profiler. And at the first fret here, you can start to see you know we're approaching it. Obviously, there's a lot of light uh, going through. There's still you know plenty of of neck carving to go, but this is how you start to get the neck profile that you're looking for. And so the next step is now there's a, a facet line here and you still have your center line. And so what I'm going to do is try and smooth this off to knock down this hard edge, which will again make this a little bit rounder as I go over it. Once I have that part done, I'll probably go over with the fine side of the rasp and start to do a round over. And then I can start sanding to make sure that the profile is what I want to see. Second set of facets goes way faster. We put our template down. We're starting to see, starting to get some of that rounding shape. Uh, what I'm going to do now is start to hit this hard edge a little bit to round it over. I'll uh, hit these round or hit these hard edges, and then that'll pretty much be it. Um, what I'll do after that is uh, take a step back, um, do some sandpaper uh, across this way to start building in kind of that oval or C shape. I'll do that with you know, pretty pretty low grit paper, maybe 60 or an 80. See where the neck is, um, and then I'll you know start carving out the heel and the volute areas. Now that I'm done um, smoothing out the facets, you can see I'm not quite there to the exact template, but at the same time, the gap is pretty much even all the way around. And so I have roughly the profile I'm looking for here at the first fret. <clears throat> Seventh fret's a little asymmetrical. I'm not sure I mind that. Twelfth fret, no. Again, yeah, not too bad. Um, so I was going over this before, rounding it over with the uh, fine side of the rasp. And I'm pretty happy with where this is. I think for now, what I'm going to do is go back, carve the heel and the volute in, and then I'll go through and do some sanding and see what's left. One thing that's I'm super, super happy with, you can start to see the the flame coming through. Um, it's always hard to imagine what 
the rounded neck might look like um, from the square billet of, of flamed maple. Uh, but I think this is gonna look really special. So off to the chisels. I've had friends joke uh, about what part of hand making guitars is using a bandsaw or a uh, spindle sander or belt sander. Um, this is definitely the hand, hand making part. And so I've taken the uh, neck off of the, uh, the workbench and so now I'm going to go ahead, use my chisels, and start to smooth this out. I'll likely also continue to use uh, a rasp of some sort to start smoothing off these edges. Uh, we want to make sure that it's a nice, uh, smooth transition up the neck. It's going to get fatter towards the headstock. Uh, same thing here. We go from the, the thinner neck profile, starts moving up the uh, heel, and then the heel is an inch thick. And so this is going to take a while, so I'll also time lapse this. Um, but pretty soon we'll get to the profile of um, a nice uh, feeling guitar neck. Carve of the neck is now complete. I used a combination of a half round rasp, the Japanese saw rasp, some chisels, uh, and then you know basically just try to take my time, make everything smooth. Now this neck is still pretty rough, and what I think I'm going to do is use a card scraper to go over this to do um, some last shaping of of these kind of gradual areas here, so that. I can just make sure everything is okay before I go and start sanding this. I don't want to get to the point where I start sanding like crazy, then figure out I don't like the profile. Uh, but I'm getting pretty close. After you know, I do that scraping and do some sanding, uh, I'm going to probably dry fit this back on the body to make sure everything is still okay, and then uh, I'm going to oil finish it. And you know, I, I lacquer finish the body, but. In this case, uh, I like the feel of, of a more natural feeling neck, so I'm going to put a couple of coats of true oil on this. Uh, of course, that's going to make the green uh, really pop as well. And so uh, pretty soon, uh, this guitar build will be ready for assembly. After doing some card scraping and a little bit of sanding, uh, I'm pretty much where I need to be. We've got a fairly smooth um, neck and then we have some decent curves going into the thicker um, headstock area. And so the last thing I'm going to do is, uh, at least for the um, fabrication portion, is I'm going to take some 100 grit sandpaper and I'm going to sand it across like this with two hands. And that's really going to kind of smooth and, and get the most of the arc into the, the neck. And then I'll probably lightly sand uh, some other places with 100 as well. And that'll uh, complete the fabrication portion of the neck. Uh, since I'm going to be doing true oil, I am going to go and sand it to uh, a much higher grit than 100. Um, but that's, you know, for, for another, another video. So thanks for watching. Uh, hopefully this was able to demonstrate how uh, you can carve a neck. Uh, it's really not too bad. Um, you know, this is the third neck that I've done. Uh, each time gets dramatically better. Um, really just like everything else, if you take your time and think about what you're doing and, you know, do lots of checking, uh, it's, it's something that you can get proficient in uh, pretty quickly. Thanks for watching.